Hello, my name is Drew James and I teach over at LearnGuitarInLondon.com where there is hundreds of free guitar lessons. Um, and this is a new one for them. And this is um, Radiohead and uh, True Love Waits, which they released on their new album, uh, A Moon Shaped Pool. But I'm doing the version that surfaced on the I Might Be Wrong album. You can tell I'm a bit of a Radiohead fan. <laughs> I hope you are too. I'm sure you are. Otherwise, why would you be watching this? Um, and yeah, so that was like 10 years ago, previous. But they've just done a version on a moon-shaped pool. And um, it's got piano and it's just as good. But I thought I'm going to do the acoustic lesson. Um, I'm going to be teaching you the rhythm pattern because it's got that sort of Tom York style uh, there's something called dotted quavers on there that we need to learn with the rhythm pattern. So I'll show you how to do that. And I'll be taking you through the whole thing in my usual patient and understanding way. I generally, in my lessons, I like to show people the thing that most people would get wrong and teach you how to practice that and get better. So let's have a look and learn how to play it. There's two keys to success in getting this song right. And that is mastering the chord changes, of which there aren't many and getting the rhythm, which I personally think is slightly more important because the rhythm is quite a challenge uh, if you've never attempted a 16th beat syncopated pattern before. Don't worry, I'll explain what that means. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go through your, your chords first of all. Um, you probably don't know some of these chords, so I'm not gonna include a link. I'm gonna start with the easiest one, which is the C. Put your index finger on the first fret on the B string. Eddie eight, dynamite, goodbye, B. This is Eddie. Middle finger on the second fret on the D string, dynamites, and ring finger on the eight, the A string, on the third fret. And for that chord, you strum the bottom five strings. We're gonna be doing something uh, special with the chords in a minute, but for now, just strum those five. Next, I'd like you to leave the index there, where it is. And then I'd like you to make an E minor, essentially. So put your middle finger on the second fret on the A string and your ring finger underneath on the second fret on the D string. Leaving the index there, pressing down on the first fret. This is an E minor over C. Treble six. You're then gonna to change to A minor. So what you do is you take this little block of fingers, leave this index exactly where it is, but with this block, move it down to the D and the G string. It's a nice easy change. Let's drum the bottom five for that. So here is your E minor, rule six. E minor over C, sorry. And this is the A minor. And then the chord that's probably gonna take you the longest to get the hang of. It's quite an unusual chord, but you've gotta love it. It just sounds so good. It's a sweet chord. I don't know where Tom York pulls his chords from. It's like magic. Um, move up this index finger to the fourth fret. So stay on the B string, we go to the fourth fret. Put your middle finger on the fifth fret on the D string, on the G string, sorry. And the ring finger, don't put it here because it will sound awful. That's what I was doing when I was practicing. Put it on the string um, above on the sixth fret. So it's kind of like a C, but not really. And then what we're doing is, so we've got those notes. Okay. Not quite. So I didn't have the six down as well. So the six is here. So it's this, my mistake. So the index, everything was fine while I was teaching. I just didn't put the little finger down. So when you've got this down here, also put your little finger down on the sixth fret on the thinnest string. So it's an unusual chord. And with the ring finger, make sure that it's collapsing and muting the D string. If that D string rings, it sounds horrible. So mute it. Laps it. Okay, so there you go, there's that chord. So let's go through the order. So you've got C, E minor over C, A minor, and then this. <laughs> I'm not going to think of a name for it in the minute. That's what you've got. Something over D sharp. There's one other chord that you're going to need later on, and that is this F major seven, uh, but I'll get to that when we get into the lesson. So let's learn this rhythm. Now on screen, right now, I've included a key on how to read this rhythm arrow system. I, I like to use this rhythm arrow system because it encourages you to think about the right hand in subdivision and um, keeping the pulse and the beat. Tom York is doing this naturally. He's not 
thinking about it in, as in front of the mind as we're going to have to, to learn it. But when you've got this idea of ghost trumps, which is what the little arrows mean, so the little arrows mean not hitting, they're just missing, and the big arrows mean hitting. So I'll put the actual rhythm on screen now. Well, let's have a look at how we're doing it. So it's... Okay, so we do have this camera, which is lucky to getting the hang of the rhythm. Um, so let's take it very slowly using the rhythm arrow system. So it's down, up, miss, miss, down, miss, miss, up, miss, miss, down, miss, miss, That's it. You may think, oh, Drew, that doesn't sound at all like the song. No, but it's because it's so slow, right? So if we sped it up, just a little bit. Down, up, miss, miss, down, miss, miss, up, miss, miss, down, miss, miss, up, down, up. It starts to sound more like the song. But make sure you're doing those misses. The misses don't need to be any longer or any shorter or any quicker. They are the same as what you would be doing if you were strumming. Okay, so it's. I'll do it one more time. Down, up, miss on down, miss on up, down, miss on up, miss on down, up, miss on down, miss on up, down, miss on up, miss on down, up, down, up, repeat, down, up, miss on up, miss on down, down, miss on up, miss on down, up, miss on down, miss on up, down, miss on up, miss on down, up. So, get that rhythm. When you've got that rhythm, yes, in the live recording, Tom embellishes it slightly and he moves it around and he does extra up strums, but that is your core basic strum. If you played that along with um, that recording, where I've included a link in the video so you can play along, that will get you through it. Get all the chord changes done um, and you'll be going well with that. So, what I was talking about with these embellishments of the chords, so what Tom does a lot is there's a lot of lifting up of the index finger and he messes it around depending on how he feels. But the first strum you lift up the index finger and then as you come on the up strum you put it back. So it's down up, so lift up foot down. And once you put it down you leave it there. Repeat. And you do the same with the E minor. Finally, with this chord, well, we're not going to do any embellishments, but it's the same rhythm. And you may have noticed that every chord is played for two bars or two passes of the rhythm pattern that we've learnt, unless I tell you otherwise. So that's what you're doing throughout all of the verses, that chord progression, the C, the E minor over C, the A minor, and this, okay? Um, and once you've done that, when you get to the don't leave, let me take you through the order of chords. So we've got a C, as normal, but it's just one bar. We're then going to do this chord, which is well, like an F major. So middle finger down on the second fret on the G string, ring and pinky on the uh, third fret on the A and the D string. And this one we're doing a chord change half bar. So I'll show you what that means. I don't know if you noticed there. First of all, this is the chord change I'm doing. This is the chord I just showed you. Move the ring finger up to the third fret on the thickest string and the middle finger up to the second fret on the A string. It's kind of, it's a G, based on a G chord. So we're going 
So we're going down, up, miss, miss, down, miss, miss, up. And it's on that up where we're changing chord. Do that again. So it's um, and then on leave it's back to C major. You repeat. G major chord with optional little finger if you want you can put it down lift it up okay so let's take you through that chorus one last time in fact I'll tell you what I'll do I'll do one pass of the verse chord sequence going into the chorus chord sequence calling out the chords as we go one two that is a verse and a chorus. What happens is in verse 2 you do the same chord sequence again and the chorus you do the same chord sequence again. The chorus is always the just don't leave, don't leave that part. Then there's an instrumental that he does and I'm just going to show you what he's doing. Basically he mixes up the chords a little bit. Everything is exactly the same. It's the verse chord sequence so it's C major with that same rhythm although he does vary it with this sort of stuff. Basically, some more strums. A minor. Then he goes G major. So this chord, this G that we've had before at the end of the chorus. Then he changes up. So it's. And so we're sliding this shape that we've moved up to, slide that down to the first fret. So we've got this done as half bar. So it's down, up, sorry, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. And then we're into back to C. First chorus, the first three. Dun, dun. I'll do that instrumental again. You can play along with me. And that really is all you need for the whole song. So here we go. Mm -hmm. 